Manjeshwar Govinda Pai, the 23rd of March 1883 to the 6th of September 1963, also known as Rashtrakavi Govinda Pai, was a Kannada poet. He was awarded the first Rashtrakavi title by the Madras government. Kasaragod district was part of South Kanara district of Madras Presidency prior to the linguistic reorganization of states on the 1st of November 1956. Rashtrakavi M. Govinda Pai was the one who put Manjushwaram Kerala on the literary map of India. <laughs> Early life M. Govinda Pai was born on 23 March 1883 in a Konkani Gode Saraswat Brahmin family at his maternal grandfather's house in Manjushwar. He was the first son of Mangalore Sahukar Thimapa Pai and Devaki Ama. Govinda Pai went to school in Mangalore. For college education, Pai went to Madras Chennai. Due to the sudden death of his father, he had to return. <laughs> <laughs> Career Govinda Pai was also a prolific prose writer. His earliest composition in prose was Sri Krishna Karita 1909, which makes for remarkable reading. Govinda Pai narrated the story of Christ's crucifixion in his work Golgotha 1931. The next three panegyrics published by him, Vishaki, Prabhasa and Dahali, narrated the last days of the Buddha, God Krishna and Gandhi respectively, were a result of the huge success of Golgotha. His best works written in blank verse, viz. Golgotha, The Last Days of Christ, published in 1937, Vaisakhi, The Last Days of Buddha, published in 1946, and Hebaralu, The Thumb, The Story of Ekalavya Retold, published in 1946, have won a lasting place in the gallery of the greatest poets of Kannada literature. Gamata Jinastuti was his first published work. He introduced the sonnet form into Kannada. Hebaralu dramatizes the story of Drona and Ekalavya, characters from the epic Mahabharata. Govinda Pai also enriched Kannada learning with his historical studies and research. He was an authority on the chronology and history of Tulunad. His works also testify to his universal outlook as well as to his deep compassion for the poor and the downtrodden. He was able to read and write fluently in 25 languages including Tulu, Malayalam, Sanskrit, Telugu, Tamil, Marathi, Bengali, Persian, Pali, Urdu, Greek and Japanese apart from Kannada, Konkani and English. He translated several Japanese works into Kannada. Topic: Works <laughs> <laughs> His poems are Gilavindu 1930, Parrot Flocks His first collection Gilavindu consists of 46 poems exhibits poet's perspective towards life, his love for the country, his responsiveness to the nature around him and his love for Kannada, Nandadipa the enduring lamp his Nandadipa consisting of 37 poems, a tribute of devotion to God. Sri Pai's name will be remembered forever in the realm of Kannada language as well as in the minds of Kannada people. Harudayaranga his other works include Hebaralu on Ekalavya, Chitrabanu on Quit India Movement, Vaishiki about the last days of the Buddha, Manina Sagadu, Tayi. Topic awards and legacy in 1949, the then Madras government conferred on him the Rashtrakavi Award. He was the president of Kannada Sahitya Samalana at Bombay in 1951. On his 125th birth anniversary, a national award was instituted in his name, and his old house at Manjushwar is mooted to be a national monument. In Udupi, near his native place, the Govind Pai Research Institute is established near MGM College of Dr. T. M. A. Pai Foundation of Manipal Institutions. Other centers in the vicinity are Yakshagana and Janapada Samshodana Kendra, Kanakadasa Pitha, and Tulu Lexicon Project. Govind Pai was also acknowledged by the government of Kerala. The Govind Pai Memorial College is a part of Kannur University in Manjuswar as a testimonial for this. Govind Pai attended the intermediate course at Government College, Mangalore. It was here that he had Panj Mangesh Rao as one of his teachers. Panj was another pioneer of the modern Kannada literary renaissance. Govind Pai had once asked Panj for the text of two songs which Panj used to recite. 
Pange used to borrow literary journals from Gavind Pai, who, even as a lad of 13, had developed a taste for books and had started subscribing to literary journals. On the occasion of Gavind Pai's 125th birthday celebration at Manjeshwar, the foundation stone for the Gilavindu project was laid. The Union government and state governments of Kerala and Karnataka jointly took the initiative to build a memorial by planning a project called Gilavindu at an estimated cost of 20 million rupees, which will consist of an open amphitheatre, venue for staging plays, art exhibitions, yakshagana, library section, preservation of manuscripts, research, comparative studies, archives, guest house for scholars etc. The Indian Oil Corporation IOC Foundation would meet the expenses to renovate the Govinda Pai Memorial Building into a museum, library and an auditorium. The initiative was part of the Gulavindu project, launched by the Kerala and Karnataka governments, to develop the poet's ancestral house here into a national level centre of literature, culture, and research. Though Gavind Pai today exists for us in the form of his poems, plays essays, and such other literary and non literary works, his life was so full of events and his personality so impressive and his accomplishments were so various that they have been recorded by many writers who were captivated by them, and these records also recreate his life for us. Govind Pai's circle of friends and readers was so large that in the commemoration volume brought out in Kundapur in the year 1965 no fewer than 70 writers, all eminent and distinguished writers in their own merit, sketched the remarkable qualities of the genius that Govind Pai was. Govind Pai's rich personality, reflected in his works, gets further focus in these reminiscences. Poetic composition in Kannada was largely conventional around the turn of the century. On the prescription of all poets invariably used to maintain the initial rhyme in versification. Govind Pai too adhered to this practice in the early stages of his career. His first poem Suvasini was published in the journal of the same name the first poems to be published in Swadeshabhimani were Subhadra Vallapa and Kaliya Mardana. These poems had the initial rhyme. These rhymed poems were published in the journal Swadeshabhimani from 1903 to 1910. But slowly Gavind Pai began to ask whether initial rhyme was so essential to poetry. Sanskrit poetry and English poetry did not have this element but that did not detract from their merit. Once Gavind Pai made bold to ask Panj Mangesh Rao about his opinion on giving up rhyme. He seemed to imply that writing without rhyme meant a lack of poetic skill. Gavind Pai was not satisfied with the response. But he still hesitated to deviate from the trodden path. Some poems which he wrote without rhyme he destroyed. But when he was in Baroda in 1911 he finally made up his mind to renounce rhyme. But today Govind Pai's route of deviation has become the royal path. <laughs> <laughs> Artifacts available at M. Govinda Pai Regional Research Center Udupi See also Kuvampu G.S. Shivarudrapa Rashtra Kavi Govinda Pai Samshodana Kendra Research Center